Hello, and welcome to Hawaii Literacy's YouTube channel. Today, we're going to dive a little bit deeper into health literacy and look at ways to take charge of your health. Before we move on, let's do a little review since our last webinar. We discussed what health literacy was, and I want to see what you guys remember. So I'll give you a few seconds to write down or talk with a partner about what health literacy entails. That's right, so health literacy is the ability to listen, understand information, follow instructions, fill out forms, make decisions, and take action. So what that means is we want to hear what the doctor's saying, understand what he's saying, and if he tells us to do something, understand and know what he's telling us to do, be able to fill out any medical forms, know what all the words are asking, and then to be able to make a decision or a choice about what's best for our health. And then the ultimate goal is to take action. So if that means, if the recommendation is to lose weight, then maybe that means to start dieting and exercising. So why does health literacy matter? Because your health is the most important thing. Without it, you have nothing. Today, specifically, we're going to learn your basic rights as a patient and then some tips and strategies for taking care of your health. So, do you guys have choices when it comes to your health? What do you think? I'll give you a second to discuss. You're right, you do have rights as a patient. In fact, when you use healthcare services, whether it's a doctor's office, a hospital, a walk-in clinic, or anywhere else, you have rights. And today we're gonna to talk about those rights. The first one being, you have the right to be clearly informed or told about your health, what your treatment options are, and how the treatment works. And that means your diagnosis. You also have the right to ask questions and receive clear and complete answers. If there's anything you don't understand that the doctor says, you have the right to ask him to say it another way or explain it more. You also have the right to receive safe and appropriate care. If at any time you feel in harm's way or maybe that the equipment isn't clean or sanitized, you have the right to use your voice and express your concern about that. You also have the right to participate in healthcare decisions. It's not a one-way street. It's not just what the doctor tells you to do. You have to think about it and see whether it makes sense for you and then decide. So both of you get to decide in your treatment. That being said, you do have the right to refuse treatment if you decide you don't want to go in a certain direction with something. You have the right to privacy. That means anything that's put into your medical record, any forms you fill out, will be kept between you and the doctor or the healthcare provider that you're working with. You also have the right to look at your health records and correct any errors, whether the doctor wrote down you have a certain symptom and you don't, or they recorded your age wrong, you have the right to look over and double check it. And finally, you have the right to be treated politely, fairly, and with respect. So in preparation for your next doctor visit, I'm gonna go over some tips to help you. My first tip is the three question strategy. So as you'll look at the screen, you see the three questions what is my health problem? What do I need to do? Why do I need to do this? I like to write down on a little piece of paper these three questions and bring them with me to all my appointments so I never forget to ask these three. You can put it as a reminder on your phone. Another thing you can do with these three questions is when the first one says, what is my health problem? You can scribble some notes about some of your symptoms or things you're feeling or what's going on with you just to help jog your memory so when you visit the doctor you already know kind of what to talk about and ask. But that being said, 
these three questions are important questions you want to have answers to before you leave your doctor's appointment. So some more tips and strategies are you want to ask your doctor to either write down the most important information for you or you can take notes. Either way, you want to make sure you have a copy of what he's asked you, he or she has asked you to do. So you have no questions about what the protocol or what you're supposed to do after the appointment. You can also record if you get the, per, the doctor's permission, you can record the appointment just so you have a record of what was covered in the appointment. And that being said, it also is helpful to write down any instructions or just reminders for yourself. You can and should bring a family member or friend with you because it's always helpful to have another set of eyes and ears at an appointment. Just in case you forget one thing or you get too distracted, it's nice to have somebody else who can you can talk to after the appointment to make sure you walked away with the same information. Another important thing is it's always your right and it's a good practice to ask the doctor to repeat themselves, repeat their instructions to make sure you understood what they were saying. Sometimes it's helpful to even say back to them what their instructions were, just to confirm that you know what they said to do. So, hey doctor, um, I think you're telling me I should be taking my medication in the morning after breakfast and then in the evening after dinner. Is that correct? And it gives you a chance to make sure you've understood the information that you've been told. And as I'll reiterate and say over and over again, it's always okay to ask questions. In fact, it's encouraged because it's your health. And like we said in that other slide, your health is the most important thing. So ask as many questions as you need. So some more general tips and strategies are, just because you go to one doctor doesn't mean you can't go to another doctor to ask for a second opinion or to get more information. I know sometimes I go to a doctor and I don't really think they have enough experience or background or maybe I just want to get another set of eyes and ears before I make a drastic decision about my health. So I'll tend to talk to another doctor too. One thing I do is I usually bring either my phone or I'll have like a dictionary nearby or something and I will look up any words that I don't understand, whether it's on the medical form, if I can't ask the doctor themselves, or if it's in anything that the doctor said, I might look up on my phone either a word or a picture so I could better understand what he or she is talking about. That leads into the next tip, which is asking to explain a different way. Sometimes you don't always get what someone's saying on the first try, so it's okay and it's recommended that you ask them to repeat it in a different way. Maybe you ask, can you draw me a picture of that? Or can you try using different words to explain what you're saying? Or if there's a language barrier, you can always ask for the nurse or doctor to see if they have any translated materials for you in your native language. Another thing I like to do is practice before my doctor's appointment. Sometimes I might get a little overwhelmed or nervous being in the doctor's office and forget some of the things I wanted to talk about or ask or what I was going to say. So I've been known to talk to my mom and sometimes practice with her, like, what are my symptoms? And I'll tell them to her, or why am I coming to the doctor? Or what do I need help with? And I'll just practice what I would say as if she was the doctor. And this is also an exercise we'll do later, so keep that in mind. And finally, like I said before, you have the final say when it comes to your medical care. And so don't feel ever that you're being forced into doing something. It's your choice at the end of the day. So now we're going to talk about a couple examples, and I want to kind of get your opinions about whether you've been in a situation like this, what you might suggest to these people, and sort of just any ideas and thoughts that kind of come up in your heads when you're hearing about these. So the first case is Laliha. 
Maliha is putting off seeing the doctor. The way she is feeling lately, she knows she should go, but she never feels comfortable there. She'll probably leave anyways without understanding what the doctor says, she figures, with all the medical terms he uses. She seems to leave the office more confused than when she went in. Now, do any of you ever feel like Liliha? Have you ever had a similar experience? What have you done? Well, if I was Liliha, one thing I would probably do is I would go back to one of our tips and strategies about asking questions and asking the doctor to explain things in a different way. Because again, it's my right to know what's going on with my health. So if I don't understand something, it's the doctor's responsibility to explain it to me. So that's one thing. I might also bring my cell phone and look up any sort of pictures or images of terms or words that the doctor said or ask the doctor if they have any pictures or anything like that. The next case is Hilo. Hilo is a grandfather. His grandson lives with him. Tonight, his grandson is sick with a fever. So Hilo decides to give him some children's medication for lowering the fever. He isn't sure how much medication to give the boy or how to read the chart on the medication bottle. Should he give the amount for his age or the amount for his weight? The chart is so confusing and the print is small, it's hard to read. So what would you guys do in that situation? Or have you ever been in that situation? Do you ever have trouble understanding medication instructions? So what I would do is I would first call the pharmacist. It's kind of like what we talked about before. The doctors are your best source. So I would call the pharmacist or whoever gave me the medication and ask them to repeat what the dosage or how much medication you should take and when you should take it and basically any questions I had about um, the age and the weight of my grandson and how to give the medication. I would also talk to somebody else if I was unable to reach the doctor. I would find another family member or friend who might be able to read the label better, maybe they have better vision or they can understand it better and ask them to explain it to me. But I would never just assume or make a decision without really knowing what's going on because you want to make sure you don't do anything to make your health or your loved one's health worse. The last case is Paul. At Paul's annual checkup, his doctor tells him his blood pressure is too high. Paul gets a prescription for medication to help lower his blood pressure back into a healthy range. Paul doesn't mind taking pills to stay healthy, but he forgets some days and he never quite remembers if he's supposed to take the pill before he eats or after. He's also not sure the medication's really making a difference. He feels just the same as he did before. Have you guys ever started taking a medication or started a new kind of health and fitness plan but had trouble sticking with it? What did you do? Now, if Paul was a friend of yours, what advice would you give him? If Paul wanted to get more information, who should he talk to? So these are just some of the questions that came up in this case, but what I would say is, I know I've had that experience where I start taking a multivitamin, I know it's good for me, but then all of a sudden it's been three days and I forgot to take it, and then I don't know if it's really working, so I stop taking it, then I start, stop, start, and I kind of have no record or history of how often I've taken it and if it's actually helping me or anything like that. So I think an important thing to do is find a health regimen or routine that works for you. If you know you will not take vitamins in the morning because you'll forget you're always in a rush going to work, then maybe you put the vitamins right next to your toothbrush. So every night when you brush your teeth, there's your vitamins and you take it. Any kind of reminder to keep you accountable and also to make sure you, don't, you take the pill. If for some reason that doesn't work, then maybe it's the time to talk to your doctor about other suggestions you can use to 
make your blood pressure lower, so whether it's exercise, losing weight, or other things besides pills. So a couple of words that we've talked about during the scope of this webinar, but I want to kind of make a point to talk about specifically are the words symptoms and diagnosis. One question you'll be asked when you go to a doctor is, how are you? This is another way of saying, what are your symptoms? What is wrong with you? Sometimes the word symptoms can be off-putting, but if you just think of it as how are you feeling? What doesn't feel right with you? What is uncomfortable? That can help you figure out the words to use. The other word is diagnosis. So diagnosis is once you tell kind of the doctor all your symptoms, all of the issues or problems that you're having, they take all that information and they decide or determine what is wrong with you, what you're sick with. Sometimes they might have to do extra blood work for that or schedule multiple doctor visits, you know, before they can give you a diagnosis. So I know we talked about earlier that it's good to practice with like a friend or family member what you're going to talk about in your doctor's appointment because it keeps your mind fresh and and make sure you don't miss anything that you wanted to say but forgot. So we have an activity, a role-playing activity. So if you and a partner want to work on this, one of you will be the doctor and one will be the patient. So I'll go through this. The doctor might ask, what would you like to talk about? How are you? Your partner would say, I'm not feeling so great. The doctor would say, can you tell me more about it? The patient would say, yes, I can. Here are my symptoms. Now would be the point for you guys each to fill in the blank what your symptoms are, whether it's a headache, a running nose, you're tired, you're anxious, whatever it is, I want everyone to get in the habit of practicing, being able to say their symptoms, think about them, just so it becomes easier for you and it doesn't feel so overwhelming at the doctor's. So that brings us to the end of today's webinar. Today was another introduction into some of the ways we can take better control of our health. Speak up if we don't understand and know that it's okay to not understand. Most of us don't understand, but it's your right to ask questions and learn. The more questions we ask, the better we understand, the more positive steps we can take for our health. We can figure out what medications to take, how best to take care of loved ones, and ultimately limit the amount of times we have to go to the doctor. Remember, your health is yours and your health is most important. So hopefully some of these tips and strategies help you guys with your next doctor's appointment. Thank you.